Hello and welcome to this episode of the weekly edition. I am Mitchell Murray. Now, walking their public fears and speaking in authority, power and conviction, we bring you an exclusive coverage of the Public Speaking Competition 2019 that happened in Karatina University. As we ask the question of how important a skill this is in the 21st century. You'd want to stay with us to the end as we will also have conversations with the event sponsors as well as some of the people that won during this very competition. Peter Checky also will be here as he brings us up to speed with what the event coordinators had to say about the event. This is the weekly edition and it begins right now. listening to our weekly episodes to find out more. The weekly edition comes to you from the MW254 network. Thank you for tuning in. Now let's get cracking and for the its inaugural time, the Karatina University Public Speaking Competition took place in Karatina University on the 29th of March 2019. And well, Miriam Jaroge joins us now. Now Miriam, set the scene for us. How was this event? Hi Mitch, the day was heavy with events. It started at 9 a.m. and finished at 4 p.m. Well, here's a report I did about the event. Passion, confidence, and brains are three traits that featured widely among these competitors come 29th of March, 2019. It was the first of its kind public speaking competition in the region held at Karatina University main campus in Kagoshi. A competition that saw 40 shortlisted contestants face each other for the prize of the best public speaker. The event was actually very, very educative. I was actually thoroughly impressed by how smart the students actually are. There was a wide variety of topics, wide variety of opinions, so it was very educative. I was actually really impressed. Yeah, it's, it superpassed my expectations. The event was moderated by Dr. Kamau Alice, head of the department responsible for organizing this event, that's the Human Resources <laughs> Development <laughs> at Karatina University. <laughs> Begin with we had five objectives for the academic year 2018-2019 and the, to enhance talent by linking the students to the industry one, was one of the objectives. Each of the shortlisted contestants was given five minutes to speak about the topic of their choice under the themes higher education for socioeconomic development, the importance of conserving our environment, trade relations in East Africa, incredible power of the mind, dangers of social networks, leaders who change the world, role of the media in development, and the economic benefits of SGR. One of the most picked topics was the incredible power of the mind. Ivonia Mala, the school's vice president, was the winner in this category. She shares with us the amount of work that went into the preparation. Uh huh. You know, I'm a leader and I've always been doing this. But then now that this was a competition, I needed to find time for my preparation. And I had to re do my research work because, you know, I had to have something tangible to present to my audience. So it took quite some time and I had to replay the tape in my mind over and over again before bringing it on board. The competition for so nine people from each of these topics take home prizes and get the rare chance of being featured on the daily nation newspaper in the country. Among many other reasons, this event is meant to encourage public speaking among the millennials as a vital skill in the 21st century and enhance talent. The students that we have and the youth should utilize what it is that they have, the other skills, so that we are not just focusing on the academic knowledge that we have, 
Because the minute we do that, we lose the big picture. That you can even have something else that you're doing so well that it can even give you your future, can make your future assured. If you look at the innovators that we have had, the young ones who are innovating in Kenya, most of them do not have like university education, but they have been able to innovate. They have been able to come up with things that are helping humanity and all that. So for me, let us go out there and explore what it is that we can do well. And not just get fixated on one thing. You know, some people will say, oh, I'm a student, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. So what? You can be a student, do what you're doing, but you also be a student who can communicate those marketing principles very well. And the people you are selling the things to, they will be very happy that you can communicate those ideas, even be able to simplify them. Yeah. The weekly edition caught up with one of the sponsor's representatives and asked them what they would love to see in the future. Yes, for a start, I do believe it was well, well coordinated. Definitely in future, there's more improvements that can be made. There's definitely, uh, you can also invite other universities from all over the country. So yeah, there's vast amount of uh, room for improvement. But as of today, I was really impressed and the students are really warm and welcoming and really, really smart. There are plans to make this competition more inclusive of other universities in the region in the coming years and empower as many others. So Joshua, did you expect to win? But I won. What do you mean you won? Um, I mean, did you expect to win? I won. I was not surprised when I won, only that I felt uh, like I was the king of talk. Yes. Why do you think you are, be you are a better choice? I mean, I mean, what do you think made you stand out? It is because of my arrangement. It you, is because of my coordination. So you're saying you think other people did not have arrangement and coordination? They were out of the cookbook of the regalia that was meant for public, pre uh, public speaking and presentation. Uh, that's quite a ser serious allegation you're making. No, it is not an allegation, but it is speaking out the truth. Because some of them did not compete, they did not contest. They went there, it was like they went there for, for, for a beauty contest. So they did not reach the smell test of competitions. Yes. Uh, expecting, expecting to win, it is one step towards winning. So I definitely did expect that, but it was not uh, an assurance that I'm going there as Kachi the winner. Definitely no. But uh, I, in my heart, I made a prayer of a winner. Stage fright is not a, res it's not a respecter of any person at all. So for me, I was also not respected by stage fright. I was attacked by it squarely. So, but stage fright did not win over me. I controlled it, I managed it. I, I had a glimpse of the people I knew, threw a smile at them, and that's how I managed it. Is that back in primary school, I wasn't able even to speak in Kiswahili. Of course, when I remembered, when I heard immediately that I won, I was very, very happy because it made me to recall back that surely everybody has got opportunity to, to succeed. And when I remember, when I, was, when I struggled in primary, even not even a word of thank you in Kiswahili was a problem, then I realized that surely everybody has got opportunity. And if you practice every now and then, I tell you, you will succeed. Miriam Joroge, reporting for the weekly edition. My renewed congratulations to all that made it to the top in this very competition. Now, moving on, based on statistical methods, the weekly edition can now give this projection. Holding the leadership positions at an early point in life, be it as a class monitor or a games captain, whatever position it is really, does relatively make a person better in public speaking or public address, if you may, in later times in their lives. Now, Caleb Rabu joins me now with the numbers. Caleb, it's interesting to note that most of the people who won in this very award have held at one point in life an official leadership position. I think it's because leaders, uh, they have been able to have a, a, a culture of standing in front of people. They have created their their brand of being able to speak out their words, being able to present themselves in front of people, to articulate their thoughts properly and separate language from thought and thought from speech. 
So apparently more than 90 students applied and then 60 were shortlisted or 60 went for the auditions and then only 40 passed the auditions. But it is interesting to know that ladies were more in this number, in this 40 who participated in the public, actual public speaking contest, it was only 40 of them, and the number of ladies was more than that of gents. So where were the gents? I do not know that. Maybe they were busy doing something else, hopefully constructing for the nation, but the ladies did us proud. Still ahead, it's an exclusive conversation with a big mind behind this competition. We'll have a conversation with Professor Juliet Masharia as she tells us what inspired this competition. There's always been pressure to lead a posh life, not just from outside our doors or by the streets but the desire has been greater just by the palm of our hands. The millennials have been the most affected by this and with Africa's majority population being the youth, it cannot get any worse. It's been characterized by crime and ways of making it quick and easy. Ways that define what Kenyans define as moral. A real rush for gold with the pressure to make it in life at the heart of the problem. We ask just how bad has it gotten already? Join me in an exclusive two-part series as I take you into the heart of this story. Hello, my name is Peter Chiki and I'm glad that you're actually watching us. Now, on Matters Organization, the MW254 team caught up with some of the event organizers, MACQ, the public speaking event, and Professor Juliet Masharia with a lot of ecstasy expresses her feelings towards the success of the event. I, w <laughs> I was very excited and even when I'm talking about it, I'm still excited because having been in communication, I am interested in public speaking and one of the things that I do among my research interests is political communication. Political communication requires you to be able to talk, to be able to persuade, to be able to be there, to influence. And you cannot influence if you're not able to talk. You must be able to stand up, tell people this is what I believe in, support it, you know, look at it and be able to, to go around something. Like some of those topics when you look at them, they required you to go and work and have a very critical mind to be able to tell people, this is what I believe in and this is what we're doing and this is what we should need to do. Yeah, I'm still excited about it. Like I can hold another one next semester. <laughs> well, I can say that we, we started thinking about it last year because the inspiration came from the fact that we teach public speaking to communication and PR students, and we thought that we could give them a platform to practice the skills that they learn in class, and then also invite others who are talented to join them so that they can showcase their talents, so that it stops being just academic. We talked about it and decided we wanted our students to have the skills that we are being told they'll need for the 21st century to succeed. because. We have realized that when you give them just the academic knowledge, the book knowledge, out there, they need to reinvent themselves. And we have seen people coming out and using their talents that they have to go places. So at that point, we talked about it again and we decided 2019, we will actually actualize it. I want young people to be empowered because when you're empowered, you can make decisions that can empower you, empower your society, empower your nation. Because when you have no empowerment, we go back to this system of, you start blaming other people. But before you blame them, do you ask yourself, what have I done myself? Before, I can say the government has not done this, the government has not done the other. So with that empowerment, you are able to participate. We need to make this world better than we found it. And that can only come from people who are empowered. When they are not empowered, they'll have grievances. Just grievances, and they are not a part of the solution. I would want the young people that I come across to be part of the solutions not to be part of the problems that we have. 
Now, it depends. You see, when you're choosing things, the things that you want to do, you make a personal choice. A, a computer programmer who thinks he or she does not need public speaking, that is fine with them. But there are those of us who would want to be out there. You would want even to influence other people. You're not influence. Influence comes in different ways. Some people influence because they write very well and you read. Others would speak very well. And regardless of what we do, the spoken word will still influence. Because you can write something and many people don't even read it. You can put something on TV and if it was not covered and people have not heard it, they have not heard it. So for me, those ones who are interested, I encourage them. The verbal communication is power. And you see, it is instant. Those of you who are talking, you could see your audiences were not waiting for tomorrow or after one hour. If you said something that they felt was very good, they clapped. You could see they were getting very excited. For me, that is very good. Yes. And especially the power to hold your audience. When you have power to hold your audience, they'll remember what you have said for quite some time. You know, what was going through my mind was I was surprised by the information that came from the students. Because given a chance, what they were saying, like if, for example, if they said this in whatever, on national television, they would make other people change mind. They would make other people see things differently. Because actually, the way they were talking, they could have influenced many other people. In conversation with Dr. Kamau Alice, she reiterated on the importance of public speaking and the future prospects of the department as a whole pertaining to more events to come. We organized a public speaking event and we engaged the industry. We had three sponsors, that is the National Nation Media Group. We had uh, Taifa, I, I mean Taifa Sako and Mukurene de Wakulima Daily. They sponsored the event and we are very grateful to them. To start off, we started a bit shaky. Yes, we are even wondering, oh, are we going to really <laughs> fulfill what we had come to, to, to really do? But eventually, we had all the audiences that we were targeting. Yes, I would say it was 90% and we, we are really grateful to our students and the judges. Yes, and the HRD members. First of all, they are, they are actually targeting the SDGs and I really liked the, 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 the themes yeah? because they taught us a lot. I didn't know that we have brainy students as such. Yeah, The future is great for the department because uh, with that event, especially the 29th March, it opened our eyes and uh, we thought of having this an objective on annual basis because it will expose our students, it will also expose all of us as a school, as a department, as a whole university because actually we didn't really consider all the, the HRD students. We considered all the students and I'm imagining that the future is really great because we are going to involve even the universities and even the, the schools around. Even we'll continue organizing these e events with, in liaison with the university because I think this is one way of publicizing our university. Yeah, selling our university, selling our brand. Yes. My renewed congratulations to all those that won during the public speaking competition 2019. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the weekly edition. Don't forget that you can get in touch with me and some of my team on Twitter. I'm at Mitchell Murray. Let's see you next time.